Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Looped In with Maritza. I hope everyone has had an amazing week so far. Um, to those of you that are able to tune in, I thank you. I appreciate you. I'm coming to you from my kitchen today um, just because this week, um, once again, my children are virtual. So as a result, they're still doing their thing. I'm giving them their space in the living room where I normally come to you from. Um, our family pet, Lilo, I have her outside so that she, I won't have another crazy end of podcast as I did last week. So for all of you that don't know, my name is Maritza Gertie. Um, up until this Friday, I'm still the Northeast Regional Organizer of the National Parents Union. But this coming Monday, I will be into transitioning into a new role that will be announced. Um, I will wait until the organization announces it officially. But as always, I will always still be a, a education advocate, parent advocate, family advocate for everyone at all times, no matter what. So I'm very excited for that news to come out. But like I said, I will allow National Parents Union to make that announcement officially. So as you know, in the beginning of every show, I like to give out some information. Anyone that is interested in being a part of the National Parents Union, www.nationalparentsunion.org. The website has changed. It is beautiful. It's a lot more information. It's a lot more interactive. So if any individual wants to be part of the National Parents Union or if you are part of an organization and would like to be an organizational part of the National Parents Union, please log on to our website. You will then be able to <clears throat> submit your information. It is free. Uh, and I'm looking forward to talking to anyone that would like to be a part of it. If there is any information that you would like from the National Parents Union, info at npunion.org, Someone is manning that email, you will get a response to any questions you may have regarding National Parents Union, regarding um, any of our, our platforms, any of our programming, feel free to send an email to info at npunion.org. Also family, I'm going to also touch upon very quickly the campaigns that are currently happening with the National Parents Union, the EPIC campaign is a campaign that is currently out. It is with regards to information, information that you can use as a parent, as a guardian of school age children. If there are any of you that need information and are not really sure what, what to ask, when it comes to the information that you need to know regarding all of these millions of dollars that are being shared across the country that has come down from the federal government that has been given to each and every school district and you 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 want to know but you may not exactly know how to go about asking the questions i just posted in the comments the link for the epic campaign we have already gone through the task of formulating questions. So it's just a matter of you have, you can, you can download those questions. You can copy and paste it to your phone. You can take a screenshot. Any questions you may have to ask of your school district, of your school leaders, of your school, with regard to what has been done with the ESSER funds, what has been done with that emergency plan money that has been sent, what is my school and school community and school district? What have they been doing with this money? For many of us, the Title I, the second Title I meeting will be happening in between February and March. If you have these questions in hand, you will then be better equipped to go to those meetings in your schools and ask those questions. Join the EPIC campaign. Also, right now across the country, <clears throat> very soon, 
will be midterm elections, family. Midterm elections. It is very important that everyone understand that every six months there is an election and you have the power to affect change in your community. It is not just about the presidential elections. There are municipal elections going on. There are senatorial elections, gubernatorial elections, state representative elections, mayoral, district attorney, judges, commissioners. All of these seats, are a, a lot of them will be coming up. In the state of Pennsylvania specifically, we will be having a gubernatorial election. We will be having a senatorial election. State reps are going to be coming up for re-election. Do your research. If you need more information with regards to that, I'm going to add in the chat the link to the Every Family Votes campaign. Once you go on to that campaign on the National Parents Union website, it will, it will give you a huge amount of resources, a huge amount of information so that you will be better informed with regards to what you should do. It'll also give you links for you to find out if you're eligible to vote, if you have already registered to vote, if you are what's called a returning citizen, a person that was formerly incarcerated, that is now back in the community that may not be sure with regards to whether or not you are now eligible to vote. Some time may have gone out, have gone past, and you're like, I don't know if in my state, since I have returned, if I'm eligible to vote. Please make sure you go on there to make sure that you also exercise your, routes, your rights to vote in your community. This has been talked about and talked about and talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, with regards to COVID. People are now able to request, and I know a lot of people have seen this. You can now go to covidtest.gov. Four tests will be sent out for free to every household. Um, please make sure that you log on as fast as you can for this request. I'm still trying to get some information with regards to people that live in a multi-unit dwelling. Um, my mom and my sister were not able to request the free test because they live in a multi-unit dwelling, their homes, they rent as, as well as live in their homes. So someone else in their unit requested it ahead of them and they got a message when they tried to request it saying, your address has already been used. So if you live in a multi-unit dwelling, Make sure you get on board as soon as possible if you are in need of a free COVID test that's being given by the federal government. They are only doing four, four per household. For those of you that have medical insurance, get in contact with your medical insurance company. Find out from them how it will work with regards to reimbursement or you being able to get free tests. Everyone, please, 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 this is not a lighter strain. This is not an easier strain. Make sure you wear your mask so you can be safe. It is ver This variant that is all out here now, it is very quick for a person to get it, even if you are vaccinated and have been boosted. Remember that. Even if you've been vaccinated and got your booster, you can still get it. I got it. One of my children in my home got it, but not anybody else out of six people. Um, it, it's very quick to get it. Even though you're masked, you have to be careful. So please wear your mask and be very mindful of where you go and who you are around. If you don't know people's statuses, where to? And that's how I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Use your discretion, do what you need to do. Again, thank you very much for everyone that um, has taken time out of their day to listen to me have a conversation with a special guest. So I'm going to bring my special guest on and I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. 
Welcome. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? I am so great. So please introduce yourself. Yes, ma'am. So uh, my name is Jorge. Um, I am an individual who has been Latino for a very long time. Um, <laughs> so I understand the dichotomy of living on both worlds. But why do I bring this up? Um, I bring it up because there's a lot of things that seem like to be amplified during our current times. And this is where, you know, I, I grew up in the era before the Internet. So I don't know if it made it, if, if it wasn't happening at this level or it's just more uh, pervasive everywhere because of the fact it's so accessible. Um, but I feel that the energy that where we're heading isn't optimal for people of color, um, isn't optimal for America, um, because I think we're really just digging in into this them versus us uh, mentality. And it's so unfortunate because so much can be brought out in dialogue. Um, so I am an individual who grew up, I'm a first generation. So again, I'm, uh, I've been Latino for a very long time. Um, didn't learn English roughly till about like sixth grade, mainly because in my household, my parents felt that it was crucial um, and it was paramount to stick to your heritage as much as possible um, and not to veer away from it. That ended up costing me some learning during that time frame because of the fact that um, I was behind most students. And the one thing I will say that uh, people are mean, <laughs> especially individuals in, in grade school. But it was, a, it was an opportunity for me to learn that nobody was going to come and save me. Um, I needed to figure this out on my own. It wasn't my parents' fault. They had an idea, which I respect to this day. Uh, but I understood that during that time frame, it was a task trying to read in front of the class and not being able to speak properly and not being confident and believing in myself. So I always grew up with this, I don't want to call it a chip, but I always call it like this proverbial monkey on my shoulder, which no matter what room I entered, I always felt inferior or not good enough or inadequate or anything of that nature. Now, why do I bring this up is because I, I feel that even though it might not be to that level in today's world, I still believe that we as a, a people of color might still carry that. It's a generational thing that might be embedded in our DNA. Um, you know, I see it when I talk to younger individuals, to my nieces and nephews, and it's just like you hear them talk and it's heartbreaking to see that they feel that they're not good enough or they're just meant to stay in this lane of hard labor. Well, I have to work with my hands because that's what my parents did. I have to do this. When in reality, this is the most powerful tool that we have accessible to us. Not this. This is just accessible knowledge. But if you don't implement it, um, then what is it really for? So enter social media and all these other elements. Um, but I'm an individual who's been in corporate America for a long time in sales. Um, but 2020 just gave me an opportunity to see an, a new world, which is entrepreneurship. Um, I started this clothing brand. This is one of my designs. Um, it's called Cultura Pura. It's C-U-L-T-U-R-A and the word P-U-R-A. And it just translates to pure culture. And I wanted something to, again, to empower us as a community uh, because of the simple fact that it's, I don't know why there's such a, it, I don't want to say disdain because I don't want to be seeing that everyone is against each other, but the energy feels so abrasive where I can't have a different opinion because, oh, you're one of them. And that's mm -hmm. I, I think that's unfortunate because if we were to have a conversation, we would definitely be in a position where we can see each other's perspectives and maybe agree to disagree. But at least we understand, where, you know, where we're coming from. Um, and the reason this brand was initiated was there was a, a bill in here in Texas, it was called the Senate Bill 3 or SB3. And this was a t uh, the Texas lawmakers decided to group this, and more than likely you've heard of this term, which is the CRT, critical race theory. And it's such a political thing now. Again, we're entrenched, them versus us. And that's not really what it is if you pay attention to what the law is really trying to do. So somehow, and maybe you can enlighten me because I'm not in the school district, you can put in the same bucket the Ku Klux Klan and how that is morally incorrect and somehow put into it 
the history of uh, Cesar Chavez, the history of, like, for example, uh, Dolores Huerta, uh, letters from Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, pivotal people in our history. And you group them together under critical race theory and say that the that you know the the Q plus clan is morally incorrect. Oh yeah, and we're gonna sprinkle this other things because we don't want to show favoritism to certain groups. Mm. Now riddle me that. So I'm gonna let our folks know how I saw you. I saw you in TikTok. <laughs> I, I I I liked I like your content. All right, thank you. Every every single time I've seen you on TikTok, never any type of negativity. Always in giving information in a sense to educate people, to let them know who we, who we all are, what we all are, that it's okay to, to have pride in who you are without being divisive. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what I like. I mean, I got it. I got my, hey. I was like, hey, I love it. I was like, I'm going to get it. So I, I got it. And then I said, you know what? I need to talk to this young man because yes, you were, you were like me from an era prior to the internet, prior to, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. Um, but your energy is contagious. And I always like that about people. Anyone that I see that has that fire and that energy and then is so willing to speak up and speak out. Um, I have to get to know. And then the fact that um, we have some similarities. My, my family also, my father said no English. Right. Um, but he said when she gets to kindergarten, she'll learn. So when you told me, when you and I spoke, and you told me that your family chose to not allow any English to be spoken in a home until the sixth grade. Listen. During those years, you know, kinder, kinder through fifth grade, um, are those years where you're absolutely right. Some children can be mean. Some adults can be mean and not be empathetic to the choice. Your family may not be respectful of that and say things and, and, and tease and perhaps bully. And, you know, and I, you know, I remember, I think I shared with you that some of my friends that I have known since the second grade will say to me, Marissa, back in the day, yeah, you had you had an accent. And now I'm like, <laughs> really? Did I really have an accent? I mean, because now people, you know, people say to me, depending on the, the environment that I'm in and the group of people I'm around. Sorry, some, did you say that again? Oh, sorry, my, sorry, my, my phone, yeah. my, my Listen, Apple wasn't talking. They're always there listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brooklyn comes out sometimes, North Jersey comes out sometimes. Right. Um, I don't know if I have, I don't think I have a Philly accent because there's some things that, that, um, colloquially and as well as, you know, with a, with, a, with an accent, you could tell a person from Philly, whether they're from North or South. Right. But what really comes out of me it, when I'm mad, if I'm mad or excited and I'm speaking Spanish, I, there goes a Dominicana. Yep. There it yeah, is. There it, it is. Yeah. There it is. But even still, people do not know how, how to identify me. I get asked a lot, where are you from? Right. Um, who are you? Where are right. your people from? Yeah. And sometimes they I when I get asked that question, um, I always gauge where it's coming from. Right. I was gonna I was gonna tap when, on if that. It's coming from and you know, a place of really, I really want to know because I'm really curious, or if it's coming from a negative space, if it's coming from a negative space, I'll say to the person. Don't worry about where I am from. I'm here now. Yeah. You know, now, it's interesting. If, I want, it's, if you want to know a history of, of the people that I come from, I can break it down to you. But if you're coming from a negative space, you can leave it where you where you have it. It's, it's always interesting to me where there are individuals that can attempt to put you in a box and then tell you, oh, you don't go through that. And you've never experienced it. So to your point, oh, so Jorge, you know, where are you from? And I was like, oh, I'm from L.A. I'm from California. No, no, no. Where are you really from? So then you pick up that 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 energy and you're like, oh, I'm from America. Like you want you. So I'm, I, I am. A, so I'm, I speak three languages, you know, Spanish, English and sarcasm. Sarcasm is a Ph.D. And and, and I'm a salesperson. So I'm always have to be quick on my feet. So that energy is always well, we can go this tit for tat. 
Oh, I'm from here. Well, where are you from? Oh, no, 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 no. Not you, but your generation. What boat did you come from? Because that you're not a native. We can tell that, right? Because now all of a sudden, like the thing that's interesting to me, you, you brought up TikTok. Um, I am, I am a, naturally, I'm a social, antisocial person. So I always had a negative perspective on social media because of the fact that uh, I always felt that it brought out the worst, or at least that's what kind of like the news, like it always draws this, this energy. And then, you know, you see some buffoonery and then you see some things that are cute and you see, but then it, it would always seem the things that would go viral are the things that were picking on certain groups or it would be certain dances where the person who originated, which was a person of color, wasn't getting credit, but it was some young girl from Iowa who got full credit. So, so stuff like that is the things that I've noticed. But the reason I ended up joining with, uh, was for the fact that what you mentioned where I had this epiphany. It was like, well, you don't have to be that. My intention is not to be uh, an individual for my platform for Cultura Pura to be dancing just to be an idiot or doing these different things where I feel, that, again, that's my opinion, nobody else's, where, you know, people are dancing on a car that's moving. That was a fad. I remember the car, people would get out of the car and they would dance on, on the side of the vehicle causing act. That to me is an idiot move, but that's my opinion. And, and plus I'm older. So we, if anybody gets offended, at, but don't worry about it. It's just me. But then I just realized what better platform to have an opportunity to meet like-minded individuals. And that's how we connected. Where the stuff that I talk about, it might be my experiences. It might be some things that I find hilarious, which again is, you know, the Spanglish to English, the Spanglish, the, like I, I had this thing and I deal with it all the time. I, I, in my dreams, I dream in Spanish. When I wake up, I wake up speaking Spanish. So when, you know, I remember I had a girlfriend, she was like, I don't speak Spanish. I was like, what? Why, why are you mad? like, because you talked to me for the first 10 minutes. And I was like, well, pick it up, learn it, T turn on some Telemundo, some Univision and get it. But I it, understand. It, it's, it's hard because my, my husband is, is not Latino, but he's picked up. I mean, he and I have, have, have known each other for 20 years, been married for going on 10 this year. Congratulations. He's picked it up. And then it's funny because of his appearance, it depends on where he is. <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. People make people assume that he's Latino. He doesn't take offense. He's like, no, right. um, you know, they they see him and they see his features, and um, they'll come up on him, or if if you know they'll walk up on him, or they'll be standing next to him, and or heck, he could be you know Ubering out there, and someone gets in the car, and he's like, this lady, she just immediately started speaking to me in Spanish, <laughs> and he's like, no, yo no hablo español, but he'll get to that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he knows enough to say yo no sé or si sí, or no. You know, he'll say things like that because he's picked it up. Now, being fully fluent, if I went ahead and said, you know what, from now on, I'm not going to speak anything but Spanish to you until you get it. We can do it. I mean, my sons understand Spanish 100 percent, right. but are but are shy in speaking. it. That's the thing shy in speaking it and i and i tell my, my eldest is a youth pastor jorge and he can he can translate verbatim what his co-pastor is saying in spanish to english right so that they can make sure that they get the word out to two different demographics right but ask him to speak in spanish and he's like i'm good and See, that's all he'll it, say it, it's oh it's it's so funny um because i know a lot of individuals that can understand and they're with you. But when it's time to put it into words, that's when they're like, they automatically shut it off. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I can't. Or the, and that's so weird to me. So here's here's how I grew up. My uh, my dad, he would curse people out at the at the bodegas and grocery stores. So like, for example, the, the I remember this vividly. There was a kid that had a name tag and I can't remember his name. It was like Felipe. Very Latino features or, you know, Hispanic, whatever demographic he wants to consider himself. And my dad was like, oh, yeah, que la que hay? what's going on? And the guy's like, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. And my dad lipped his wig. And I mean, he was like, let me talk to your manager. How is this? So that's the energy I grew up with. So I'm not going to lie and tell you that I don't feel the same way, but I'm more understanding of the fact that individuals could have been with certain groups or maybe you grew up with one side of the family. So I get that. But here's the difference. Here's where I'm trying to find that equilibrium of like happiness. 
again, like I said before, everything is here. So much information is accessible to us. If this, if this was something you truly wanted to learn, you can. This is when you see individuals, like especially people that um, they'll go to uh, Colombia and all these places in Mexico, and they are fair-eyed, blue-eyed, and they and they went out there, they learned it, and yes. they're doing they're doing their version of God's work, right? Sometimes I feel like you know uh, colonization again, but I understand what they're coming from. They're trying to do their thing, so that's where I'm like. The place that I'm coming from is there's so many individuals that I grew up with, so many individuals that I meet. And it's this, well, I don't want to do that. That's not, I don't, I don't speak that. That's not me. I didn't grow up like that. But then it's like, here's where I associate it. And again, I'm always all about uh, dialogue. So individuals that were brought here without their permission generations ago, they had no choice. And they attempted to keep their culture alive as long as possible, but there was a suppressor, the colonizer, who dictated what was going to happen, what did it. And slowly but surely, they started killing off generational knowledge yeah. by taking away the man, breaking them apart. And then you had to learn that if you want to survive, you better not talk. So this is something that was broken in to a lot of individuals that are, are melanated people, right? Yes. No choice. Yes. Yet... We are doing it to ourselves by choice. Why? Because we want to fit in the box. So is it pronounced Jorge or is it George? Oh, call me George. Ooh, okay. Right? No, no, call, call me George. It's a lot easier for you. Nah, I'm I'm that I'm that guy. No, it's Jorge. That's right. So is it Gorge? No, we're gonna keep doing it together. Just like just like in the, right. how just how we learn in Sesame Street. Jorge. That's right. So, but now I'm in this position where I'm like. Uh, so I, I have this job where, you know, I'm in a position, I'm always dealing with a lot of people. And it's like, can I just call you George? No. No. You can call me Jorge, though. Oh, I just have such a hard time with that. I was like, then you and I are going to learn today. Because I think it's important that imagery is such a, a, a critical aspect of how you and I and our generations before and our generations after us, how we're molded. Yes. A lot of my verbiage that I have on my on my website is imagery is everything. Mm -hmm. Because if you see people of that look like you and I in positions of power, and I know a lot of people make fun of it, it's like it's just a movie character or it's just this. It's like you don't understand how paramount it is. But here's the thing, you do and you don't. Cuz if that's the case, there wouldn't be such this hoopla when years ago they were like, "Oh no, Santa Claus is white children." So it is important to you. It's only important when it's important to you, but not to us. So yep. I just feel that if we're all on the same playing field, we can see the hypocrisy and we can dictate, hey, listen, I see where you're coming from, but I understand. However, let me just correct you on this. And then you can, we agree and disagree, but now you know that I know that you understand what's going on. So right. all, all these different things, I'm telling you, I'm just like this firecracker of all these emotions. And I'm just like, go here. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to stay employed. You got to go yes. here. No, no, no. Yes. Keep it together. I mean, even as children, I can, I, my earliest school memory, um, in kindergarten, the, the, the person that showed me how to speak English was this very tall white man, white Jewish man named Mr. Katz. That was my kindergarten memory. Um, first grade, I was embarrassed about my name. Because the other children in the class, even the teacher, couldn't pronounce Maritza. So I said my name was Lisa. Oh, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> For some reason, my mother had to come to the school. And she's like, you know, I'm here to pick up my daughter, Maritza Gurili. And, you know, they were like, well, we don't have a child by that name. She's like, she is in first grade. My daughter is in this school. I registered her in this in this school. She's telling these people in the best English she can she can say. They took her around to the English to the first grade classrooms, and I I noticed that my teacher was like, "Wait a minute, students! I, somebody's at the door." And I look over at the door, and it's my mother standing there, and I'm like, "Uh oh, you know that look." <laughs> And she's like, and, and I and I can see the, the the teacher in her mannerism. She's like, who? You know, who are you talking about? And I hear my mother say, Marisa Guridi, really loud. You know where it goes. She's like, venga acá. And I stand up 
and I walk over to my mother and suffice it to say, I did not have an issue saying my name ever again. In that was one time. At all. <laughs> and suffice it to say that I grew up in an era where, yes, if you did something wrong, you did get your butt beat and I got my butt beat by my mother. Hands down. And my father, he gave me a talking to. Absolutely. And my father, you know, you know, he's not with us anymore. My father, I can say, was the most racist man I ever knew in my life. <laughs> and I say this because he was one of those men from Dominican Republic that had a sense of superiority. And when he came to this country, he hated the fact that he was not able to exercise what he went to school for. Right. And he was an engineer, an ergonomic engineer, which meant, you know, that he was taught the science and, and how to farm and, and things like that. And he had a degree in his country, <coughs> excuse me, but it was not recognized here, which unfortunately is the case for mm -hmm. a lot of people that come from Latin American countries or foreign countries right. that are not um, very affluent countries that they won't automatically recognize your title. And then you don't have the money to go to school to then become that in the United States. Right. So then you're relegated to different Labor. occupations. So he ended up being a mechanic in Brooklyn because he knew about cars. So he, he that, that was, and he made very good money back then. But there are a lot of people that came and come to this country from other, other countries and their chosen profession is not respected and honored. So they're forced to do things like do manual labor. Right. Um, you know, we knew a gynecologist, a very re well-respected female gynecologist. And here she was, they would not recognize her degree, her medical right. degree in gynecology. And she was, she was a maid. So <clears throat> as a result of that, my father was very, he had a very, 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 very strong views. But when he would say things, say things, I would say you say things about people of color, but you are a man of color. You are a black man. No, I'm not. I'm Dominican. So that that was the beginning of my education with regards to those differences that have to be explained, yes. have to be studied. Yes. Those myths that have to be broken. Yes. That education piece is very, very important. So when people see my sons, yes, I'm Dominican, but I know I'm a black man in this country. Absolutely. Every everywhere I will go, I'll, I'm a black man. My cousins, they are black men, but yes. they just happen to be of Latino descent. They understand their African roots. They know their origins. My children, all my children, know their origins, and I'm very quick to explain that to Absolutely. anybody and everybody. So when I, like, again, when I see your content and the way you explain things, you are also a teacher. Without you even realizing you are Absolutely. also, because you're teaching all these young people that are all up in TikTok and they see your stuff, whether they like it or not, they're getting some information that no one else has been able to give them or that they refuse to acknowledge. The, the, the your dad's story, Number one, it's heartbreaking to see, and you know, the two stories you mentioned, to see individuals that dedicated themselves, because it's not easy, right? And then to be told what you did isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, like you said, he was a family man, he had support for his family and we do what we have to do to survive, right? Um, the thing that I found just, and I want to sound ignorant, but just recently I've noticed how even within cultures, there's such a disdain like, for example, the thing that I always tell my friends, I grew up in L.A., so we had all kinds of groups, right? If I was with certain kind of groups, then I was like, oh, you're Latino. If I was with this kind of groups, oh, you might be mixed. If I was with this kind of groups, it was like, oh, are you Italian? It was always random. And I think it's just the melanin. Yes. Now that I'm older and I have this luxurious uh, thing that I just bought on eBay, uh, hopefully <laughs> it, looks, it looks good enough. Um, but then it's like, oh, salam alaikum. Now, I know a couple of uh, people from the airport. Oh, alaikum salam. Bismillah. I can do that. But no, sir, I am this. 
but I get it because is what it's so it's like how you see the world your per, all these different things tie into your personality your personality is what dictates your personal reality so you see what you see you understand things based on maybe not your idea but somebody who told you a family friend an elder so as i grew and i and uh, you know you start understanding that well i'm not this but i'm not that so what am i oh you must be below that's the that's the energy because the energy is always black and white, black and white, black and white. Oh, but yeah, Latino is not considered a race. And, and, I, and I get that because there's a whole conversation behind it. So then what yeah. are we? But I know what I am is when I do get pulled over, I instantly know what I am. So yeah. we can't go through this whole, well, I'm not that. Listen, when I get pulled over, here's my MO. Turn the car off, throw the keys on the dash, stick the hands out, turn every wind, uh, all the windows down, all the lights on. I, I got pulled over recently. Uh... And the guy was like, you don't need to do that. I was like, all right. Yes, he was like, he was like, no, no, you, you can put your hands. Out. I was like, no, I'm all right. So he was like, okay, I understand. He's like, I appreciate it. I was like, no, I appreciate you. And I hope you're having a good day. Because the imagery could be, we got a 10th level. And the energy is already coming based on their perception and yeah. how they see the world. My objective with the brand, my objective with the social media is to shed light to a different facet of it. I can fit in the corporate box, but I'm also still me. Yep. Like you said, I I lived in Jersey. I lived in New York. I lived in Philly. All of that is embedded in you. We are all a melting pot, but yet we want to, oh, you're not this, you're that. So now you're in a box or in a group. No, man, we're all, we have so many things that are so similar. And once you just have an opportunity to pay attention or even have a dialogue on it, people could be like, oh, you grew up like that too? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, so you did and I did. Okay, so there's a common ground. And I think I've learned that just by being uh, in sales because you have to be a chameleon. You have to be able to earn the business. You got to fit in all these different boxes. Um, but it's you got to code a, switch. We talked about that. Yes. You have to code switch. You oh, have my to, gosh. You have absolutely. to be able to, in whatever environment you're in, switch. And one of the main reasons is so that other people will not feel uncomfortable around you. Wow. And we shouldn't have to do that. But unfortunately, it is corporate America, even in, you know, whether it's corporate America, whether you're working in the public sector, no matter where it is, if there is a dominant population of people Mm. and you do not make them feel comfortable. Absolutely. Many things will be done to push you out because they don't feel comfortable. Absolutely. But a lot of times also, I sometimes am purposeful in being my authentic self to shake things up because I'm tired of other people being comfortable in their ignorance. Absolutely. So if I have to make you feel, I say this and it's funny. I don't even know if it's a word. If I make you feel uncomfortable in your comfortable, comfort, comfortability, comfortability, so be it. Because the next time you see somebody else that looks like me or talks like me or it has the same behaviors as me, okay, they're people. Yeah. I don't have to be afraid of them. Yeah. Can I give I you a, a, once I get to know a person, we're okay. Can I give you a quick something to tie into what you just said? Here's when yes. I found here's when I found the cheat code. Um, got pulled over in a hoodie, different energy. Mm. Uh, I was going to, I think uh, it was a job interview, and I had like a, a cardigan, got pulled over, not not like consecutive. I'm not a speeder or anything, but you know, I'm talking about different times. Got pulled over in a in a cardigan, completely different energy. Sir, do you know I pulled you over? I was like, you talking to me? Okay, yeah, sir. sir. Yeah, that's okay, true. let's do it. And after that, I keep a cardigan in the truck just in case. Because, again, is the perception. It's the, it's, it's, you know what? You're a lot different than what I thought you were. That's, yes. the, that's, that's the verbiage. Oh, yes. my God, you're so different. You speak and so well. Oh, that's my favorite. Ooh, oh, you that's speak my so, favorite. Oh, my children speak so well. How oh are they God. supposed to speak? <laughs> Listen, we can do that. You know what I'm saying? We can do that too, <laughs> but not at work. Like my favorite, and I know it's it's a natural thing because everybody wants 
everybody wants to be, I don't want to, I don't know how to word it. It's like, we want to be cool with each other, but I don't know. We don't know how to do it, but it's like, what's up brother. And it's like, Hey, how you doing? This is an interview. <laughs> Whoa. Dial it back. My guy. How are you doing, sir? Oh yeah, I'm doing great brother. And it's like, did you talk like that to the other guy? Cause I don't want you to get too comfortable where you forget that I'm trying to get this job. You know what I'm saying? So we can do that. We can have the conversation and then we get the job. We can have that conversation later, yeah. but that's the code switching. And it's so funny because if you don't live it, you can't really talk to it. Yeah. And people that, that say, oh, that's, it's not true. And this is, this, I just read a study the other day that a good portion of people of color do not want to go back to the office because of the code switching or the politics and all these different things, because now you're just a name on an email. And sometimes you don't even have to put your name on the, on the logo for your email. You can just put a, the logo, whatever. So I get it. And I think the problem is when one group says this happens and the other group says, no, it doesn't happen. Again, that discrepancy is where the convolu the, the, it's all convoluted. And then, oh, you're just being dramatic about it. That it's, you're, you, you devalue the conversation. You take away from that person's experience. That's why I've learned not to get mad at people. Oh, I know, what you're, I know what you're trying to do. You're just trying to claim a victim. I was like, in what regard? Let's have a conversation on it. Because if that's the case, you wouldn't be crying about masks. You wouldn't be crying about these different things. So it's when you put them in the perspective, it's like you, you, have, you deal with the same thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I never thought of it like that. Okay, perfect. That's it. I read the, it is. That, it's to give them some people a different perspective to think about. That's it. To learn to respect other people's opinions and, be, and, and, and individual thoughts. And that's okay. Right. But we also have to think about the greater the greater population. For those that say you mentioned mask wearing, for those that say that they don't want to wear masks, fine. You don't want to wear one, don't wear one. Do not come around other people that do want to wear one. Do not disrespect them also. Do not say that they are sheep. <laughs> do not say that they are, you know, listening to nonsense. No, those of us that choose to be vaccinated, to wear masks, to be safe, are following science. And it's not personal, it's the science. And you know, if, if the science says that for you to be safe around other people, either be vaccinated and wear your mask, or the latter is if you don't want to be vaccinated and you don't want to wear masks, then stay in your lane, stay home. It's, it, it, I think the it's issue crazy. Became, when, when everything, everything now it's political Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate because, you know, either way, whatever your opinion is, I respect it. That's your opinion. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Um, but I, since I am not a doctor or a scientist, I have to go based on what I read or what I see. So I'm like, okay, I'll wear it. Um, do I hate it? Absolutely. Because yeah. it, it, for me, this is all aesthetics. It does this thing to my beard where it look, it's just really bad. But here's the thing. I got to deal with it. All right. Yeah. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is like, you, and again, and I try to not to watch news or see too much uh, read news because you're like a woman attacked the elderly man because he didn't wear a mask and she spit on his face and slapped him. It's just like, come on, man. Like this is where it's a slippery slope because yeah. once you start getting violent with someone, then somebody else does it. It's, it's too much. Yeah. Um, I was reading this thing. Um, it was in the uh, Harvard Business Journal, and it was thing. It was a study that they did in the eighties. It's called the canonical perspective, and they did the study of how we see the world. So, like one of the the things that they did is like they they were like draw a a, a coffee cup, like a you know something you drink coffee, a mug, and everybody you know however they drew it, they drew it from the side, all these different things, and most people draw it from a from a side view. And the, and the study was like, well, why didn't you draw a circle? Because when you drink into a cup, that's what you see. And it's like, oh, no, well, this is what I see. That's the study. It's that we're programmed to perceive information a certain way to confirm what you think. Mm -hmm. And that's why, to me, this, this thing of cultura pura and this imagery, I don't want to feed into what you think it is. My objective is to be that catalyst. It's like, I understand that's how you might feel, but let me tell you what it's not. And then you can be like, oh, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware about that. Or you speak so well or whatever it is. I just need enough of that. So when you see somebody else, because it's not for me now, it's for the rest of us. Yep. 
women and men, children, whatever, elders, you're going to think twice to, you know, being disrespectful to somebody. Like my thing that I, with the passion that I don't like when elders are being disrespected or people that don't speak the language because they don't speak the language. When you're in America, speak our language. Listen, we're the first people to go to other countries and say, you guys don't speak English. So we can't, we, we, we just been trained to be like, it's our way or the highway. It's not like that all the time. This is a melting pot. Yes, it is. That's what this country was based upon. But now we want to change the rules. It's like, well, no, this is America. And I get it. It is America. And there's a lot of great benefits. But we also got to understand, how did we get here? Who, who did the railroads? Who works the land? How do you get your fruit? Yeah. And that's, I think that's all I want. I just want an opportunity to have a dialogue with people. I'm not here to convert a non-believer to a believer. If you believe it, cool. If you don't, well, let's talk about it. But I know one thing after we have a conversation, that perspective that you have on what you think we are could be different. That's all I want. And that's what I want to do with the brand. Just give an opportunity to give some positive light to what we bring to the table. You know? Absolutely. So, so, so Jorge, tell me, cause you know, everything goes for me, everything goes back to education. Absolutely. So tell me how, you know, you have children. Um, are they currently um, going to school in person or is it online for them? All virtual. All virtual. How has it been for your little ones? How has it been for you also? So I'll talk about them first. Pleasantly surprised to see how well they adapted. Proud on the fact that the resiliency that they have from having a loquacious child who loves to be a social butterfly to now you're just relegated to a computer in chats. Yet you're still there trying to learn, still hungry. Now, is a nine-year-old going to be a nine-year-old? Absolutely. Is uh, Minecraft and um, whatever new game is out taking over? Absolutely. Um, so there's there's times that are good and times that are questionable. It's like, wh what are you doing? However, being that this is the situation, I feel thankful for having the opportunity because I know most people don't. I know a lot of people that from my from my culture, they don't live in an area where they have good internet. They don't have internet. Yes. So, so now you have a situation where some of these kids are falling behind. Yes. Some parents don't have the luxury to work from home. Yes. So this is where you start seeing how the gaps are more visible. And it's unfortunate because now it's not even it's not even the people's fault. It is this uncontrollable whatever new variant we're on. I'm not even, uh, if this is if this is recorded right now at this present time. The new variant is Omarion Backstreet Boy 2.0. Whatever the new name Stop is. It. Stop it! It's Omicron. Leave Omarion. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least this way, people will remember it. Yeah. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is that at the end of the day circumstances and situations is what dictates who's moving forward and who's not. And what we're talking about here, money, yes. capital, opportunities. And it's unfortunate, um, but for our situation, I'm thankful for the fact that um, there's still growth. They're still succeeding. They're finding their way through it. But I know it's not going to last forever. Absolutely. You know, I, we've, been, we've been quarantined since day one, which is March of 2020. Mm. Uh, and again, I have elders in my family. Um, I have young people in my family. I don't want to be the reason why something egregious can happen. So yes. I, I can only control what I can control. I can't control the fact that this person is sneezing over the, the vegetables. I just got to wash them. I'm not going to go over there and argue with them because again, that person is embedded in their mindset. But what I can do is control what I can control. And that's how yeah. I do it. Um, for me, it's very interesting to like somebody and dislike somebody in an instant. And it's just like, I love the fact that you are my child. I dislike the fact that you act this way. Like it's a weird dichotomy of like mm -hmm. a lot of heavy breathing. There's a lot of uh, Tito's with lime juice at the end of the night or whatever adult beverage you're into, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, it's what we have to deal with. It's mm -hmm. what it is. I, like I said, there's this thing that I, I was reading. It was called the, the dichotomy of control. And it's kind of like the Marcus Aurelius mindset. And as you focus on the things you can't control and the things you can, you got to let go. Otherwise, you stress yourself out. 
Absolutely. And this is a very, if you believe it or not, it's still a stressful situation because people's employments are being impacted. The economy is always on the fritz. Um, house, house purchasing, it's, in the, it's like all these things are just piling and piling and piling. And there's all these people that are falling within the gaps, which tend to be people of color. Um, and it's only going to get worse because we're two years in and it's not gotten any better. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and, that, and that's why um, I appreciate uh, the opportunity that I'm being given to, to, to talk to people um, across p- political party lines, across ethnicities, um, in English and, and in Espanol, um, I, that, that's, that's the thing that, that is the only way that parents, guardians, families will be able to have the information that they need to fight for what they feel their children need to help them get through this. Right. Because it's, it's, it's hard for, just like you stated earlier, not everyone has the ability, can afford the ability to stay home with their children. Not everyone can say, you know what, I have the kind of job that I can work from home or that is willing to give me the space and the time that is needed to help my children still work to be able to keep the roof over my he- our heads and the food on the table and keep the lights on. Not everyone lives in communities where they have access to internet. A lot of people live in rural communities. Right. A lot of people live in communities where they can't afford Wi-Fi or what or the type of Wi-Fi that is being offered is not good enough to cover a home that has multiple children. Right. Multiple people that have to get online. Um, when I worked in a school last year, they were able to give out hotspots, but I had to remind families, say, listen, I can give you a hotspot per household. But please get off of Netflix, get off of Hulu, stop the gaming while the children are going to school because this box may not be strong enough to cover all of that. Or you run it through all that high quality internet and it slows down. Yes. So it's, so it's like, okay, you know, if you want them to continue learning, do that. Right. But I also want to, um, and I say this also as much as possible, for all those educators that are doing their, their damn best with what they have, my hat's off to them. Absolutely. Because it is not easy for a person. If you're a person that's used to always interacting in person with people, and then you're thrust, you were thrust two years ago into a situation where you have to use it, do it this way, and try to capture the attention of multiple little faces and multiple little boxes on screen. It's hard. My hat's off to them because I see it. I had to sit one time. I had to sit and be in the class because they hadn't found a teacher to cover it. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with these 20 little boxes in front of me? And I did the best that I could. I always make the analogy. It's like herding cats. It's, yes. it's difficult. Um, the one thing that, that I will say that really hurt my heart, I remember in the beginning, there were pictures and videos of children. I mean, third graders, second graders um, in the parking lots of like Taco Bells and, yes. and McDonald's doing homework. Yes. And, and it's heartbreaking because it almost seems like something that you can't do anything about it because there's so many individuals going through that. But it's just like, the thing that I always try to remind, you know, my family and friends is like, you got to be thankful for what you have. That's the thing that I always tell people. You bring value to this world. You mean so much to somebody you might not even know. Um, don't underestimate. Don't devalue yourself because the world's going to do that. You need to you need to stay. It's like the like a boat. Right. If that boat doesn't have a hole in that hole, you will still stay afloat. But as soon as you allow and allow that information to permeate you. You're not good enough. Is this person holding you down? And then you're like, you're right. You're right. And there's the thing that I always tell people at work. It's like the conscious and the subconscious. What's the difference? The conscious, you can tell something to the conscious and it understands the difference of true and false. The subconscious doesn't have that power. Whatever you tell it, it absorbs it and it takes it. So if you live in a world where you're constantly telling yourself this, this, it's going to permeate and you're going to believe it. Yeah. So for those individuals that are going through those hard times, 
listen, I understand because I grew up in a similar situation where, you know, we had, I remember my dad had a Grand Torino. This was in LA. Somebody stole his Grand Torino. Mm. That was the only vehicle. So what did they, what did my parents do? Well, my dad would walk my mother and myself to the school. Now we're talking about 545, 6 in the morning because it was a hype. Walk me to school, walk her to work, and then him walk to work in the same routine. Nobody has the best scenario all the time. We all have our struggles. But the difference is, is what can you control is how you react to it. What are you going to do? Be mad, but figure out a way to get out of it. Mm. Don't go out. Don't go back in the shell and blame the world because that doesn't help nobody. That's right. But figure out a way. What can I do to make this better? Because here's the last thing. And I know I'm talking too much. And I always do because I'm a salesperson. <laughs> With this phone and with this head, you can change your life forever. It only takes one idea. It could be whatever it is. I met a guy the other day who lost his job, but he still needed to have income. So he started this thing um, on Groupon. He is teaching kids Spanish. Look at that. He created a course. He bought this thing and he showed how to create it. And he's selling it for $35, $40. I don't know his price, but now he's making money. And at the same time, there's pride in the fact that he's doing something. That's right. I think that's what I would like to promote is, yes, we might not have the best circumstances, but we need to find ways to get out of it because nobody's coming to help us. And that's what it feels like sometimes. And this is why I had to reach out to you. This is exactly why. All right. As long as I bring value, then I'm good. Oh, my gosh. So I'm going to do a shameless plug for you right now. Tell me the name of the website. I'm going to put it across the screen. So it's, the, it's, website? It's, it's, the website is www, right? World Wide uh -huh. Web dot and it's cultura, C-U-L-T-U-R-A, pura, P-U-R-A dot com. So the cloth, the, the cloth was just because the, the links weren't available in social media. But what and, I have. And, and, that, and that's and, and listen, I can't believe and, and this is what I love. The conversation gets so deep and becomes so interesting that time flies by. If it's it's uh, listen, it's it's four fifty seven my time, and I'm like, <gasps> but you know, but it's okay. I, Jorge, I so appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. I so appreciate your message, your positivity, your strength, your perseverance. I hope that those folks that that like that platform go on there and look for you because they're gonna <laughs> love seeing your content. I mean. My sister was texting me, texting me as we're talking. She's like, I love the way he speaks, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and it's, and it's, it's, it's so amazing and it's so great. And that is for me, that, that is the positive side of social media. Like I never would have met you, you know, who knows if I'm ever going to go on the, uh, to the other side of the country. So the fact that I was able to just one day be scrolling and it, you came up on my for you page, I guess, because of the content that I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking at. And I'm like, this guy is great. Hence your name. This yeah. guy is great. <laughs> so it's like, I like what he's saying. And then when you said, you know what, I'm going to be trying something. I don't know if it's going to work and I'm going to try it. And the result of, of, of you trying something is, is a clothing line. Which you know, people can go on to it and look at it, see if they like. I mean, it's in it's several different options. It's represent it's it's for anyone that wants to represent where they're from culturally, who they are, it is absolutely great and absolutely amazing. And I thank you for who thank you are. You. Thank you. This is this is my very first time doing this. I'm very thankful that you felt um you saw something in, in me that allowed us to be on your platform, and I appreciate everyone in the the World Wide Web uh, out there listening, um, please tap in with, with Maritza, man. There's so much, and again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a, a, a religious guy, but I'm a spiritual guy. She's doing God's work, so please um, tap in. Thank you so much for everyone for giving me the opportunity to be with you. Like uh, Jay Z says, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us today, and we appreciate that so much. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. So it's up to you if you want to hang out in the green room for a few minutes, but I always like to wrap up by I'm saying here. a few things to folks, okay? Peace, everybody. Yes. Ciao, ciao. Family, family, family. I truly hope that um, this hour that you spent with us was enjoyable, was informational, was educational for you. Um, again, such as life, things happen. 
Um, like I said again last week, things were kind of hectic. Things were kind of crazy. And because of all this COVID nonsense, yeah, I broke down. I did break down. But um, that's me. It's, it's, you know, I'm not coming at you with, um, you know, this big sense of, you know, I'm trying to promote myself. No, I'm trying to promote us. I'm trying to promote conversation. I'm trying to promote thinking, more critical thinking it's to allow you to make the best choices. I try to give you information that you can then take and research on your own. Um, uh, I want to thank everyone that's been tuning in. I mean, I see a lot of folks, some names I recognize. Thank you from, you know, my family, my Philly friends, my Jersey friends, my, you know, folks from up top, folks from across the country, anyone that ha has taken the time out of their busy day, because we're all busy, to join us. I appreciate you and I thank you. Again, National Parents Union is an organization that we're about families. We're about educating and empowering those people that want to ensure that their children, that their grandbabies, that their nieces and nephews, their godchildren, the children in their neighborhoods get the quality education that is their right to receive. Education is free. It should not be just for those that are more affluent and live in more affluent communities. I don't care where you live, whether you live in the suburbs, whether you live in a rural area, whether you live in the heart of a city, you and your children have the right, the right to a quality education and we are here to help you. So once again, if you are interested in being a member of the National Parents Union, the website, here it is scrolling on. It is free to join. We're not asking you for any money. It is not like a regular union where you pay dues. That is our name. We are a union of individuals that are in the fight to make sure that our future caretakers, citizens, and yes, voters someday are well-educated and get what they deserve. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Until next time, this is Maritza from National Parents Union. Thank you so very much. Please be safe and enjoy the rest of your week.